Depending on whether you expect this small step or giant leap, what trades are you setting up ahead of the July meeting? Mm. So the view we have at BNP is we think uh, there'll be 25 basis point rate cuts. We think 50 basis points is, is quite unlikely. Um, but we do think they'll follow with another rate cut later this year. Um, so we think uh, where the trade is best to play is not in rates because as we can see in the pricing for July, the rates market is looking a little bit overdone with the, with the Fed pricing. Mm -hmm. Where we think there's the opportunity is in my home ground is in FX. Mm. Um, so we, uh, we like uh, bearish dollar trades. You've seen the dollar come off a little bit since we've seen the Fed expectations uh, of a cut start to increase. Mm -hmm. But we think there's uh, more scope for the dollar to weaken. So you think the dollar can weaken even if we don't get an extended easing cycle, like say, for example, if we were just to get two rate cuts of, two, of 25 basis points each? Yeah, that's right, because I think what's key is uh, what the Fed delivers and what the market actually expects. Mm. And when you look back at past cycles, uh, even when the Fed has delivered these insurance rate cuts uh, through the cycle, um, the market has tended, when the first cut is delivered, to price in almost a, a higher probability of a full easing cycle. Mm. So although we only think 50 basis of points of cuts is going to be delivered over the course of this year, the market's probably going to price more, and that's going to uh, partly undermine the dollar. The other key thing is positioning. Yes. OK, talk to me about the positioning then, because I know you look at a lot of models and indicators. So what's the positioning telling you? So what we've seen amongst the FX investor universe is that they've already started to enter short dollar positions. Mm -hmm. so they've moved from being long throughout most of uh, the last 18 months to now being short. But where we think there's a big vulnerability to the dollar is from uh, portfolio flows. You've had over the course of the last five years a lot of portfolio inflows into the US mm -hmm. from Eurozone, from Japanese investors, for example, and we think that the hedge ratio on these positions is currently quite low. So we think as the dollar starts to turn, that's going to put more pressure on fixed income investment managers to increase the hedge ratio on their positions. And the size of these positions is large. You think from the Eurozone alone, mm. you've had uh, a trillion euros worth of outflows. So it doesn't take much of that change of hedge ratio to lead to a potentially large uh, dollar selling flow. Interesting. I mean, that all makes sense. I just want to go back to rates, though, because yesterday, Bob Michael of JP Morgan uh, told myself and Tom Keane on surveillance that he sees the 10-year yield going all the way to zero. Now, you say that already the bond market is quite aggressively priced, and I know a lot of people would agree with you on that. But there are people out there who are saying there's still a lot more potential for that to go even further on the longer end, uh, maybe not so much at the front end, but, but on the longer end. So would you still not want to be taking any moves in rates at all based on a view like that? So, so we actually think that uh, bond yields, after the rise that we've had the last few weeks, they're probably looking a little bit too high, okay. particularly as we go into the summer. You know, we think that risk appetite could come off a little bit, and that could encourage flows back into, into bonds. However, we are conscious that we do think there is a lot of negative news flow uh, priced into, into bonds. So to yeah. give you an example, you know, some of the models that we run, which try to price assets based off macro variables, yes. tell us that for next year, the Treasury market it's pricing about 1% growth from the from the US. Right. Now I think what's uncertain is 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 that the market pricing 100% probability of 1% growth or 50% probability of zero and 50% probability that everything's going to be okay at, at 2%. Mm. Um, so I think that makes trade in the bond market a little bit tricky but it does show you the extent to which there's pessimism priced into a large extent uh, in 10-year treasuries.